This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. So far, every month of 2016 has been the hottest month on record since we started keeping track 136 years ago. In fact, the past 16 consecutive months have all broken global temperature records. If this trend continues, 2016 will be the hottest year on record, possibly the hottest year since the beginning of the last ice age over 125,000 years ago. So not only could it be the hottest year ever recorded, it could be the hottest since way before the beginning of recorded history. While some of this temperature increase could be attributed to an unusually large El Nino in the Pacific, nearly all of it is because of global warming. For about 150 years, humans have been pumping a tremendous amount of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These gases trap the sun's energy and cause the planet to warm. While this is a uniquely singular event in human history, it is not without precedent in Earth's history. If we look at the fossil record, we can see that the Earth went through a period of global warming similar to today, only millions of years before humans and all our cars and power plants and power gloves even appeared. Good Stuff producer Matt Weber looks into this distant past to see if we can find any clues to what the future of global warming has in store for us. Actually, this, this always looks better if you hold the book. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is Lance Grand, and he wrote this book. The Lost World of Fossil Lake. So this is about that, um, that place in Wyoming. As well as being a curator at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois, Lance Grand has been doing paleontological field work at a fossil site in southwestern Wyoming for over 40 years. Called Fossil Lake, Lance has unearthed some of the most beautifully preserved fossils in the world, and it's testament to a climate very different than today. I mean, today this is a, this is a high mountain desert region, uh, about 7,200 feet above sea level, and it starts to snow in late September, so it's a fairly harsh climate, but 52 million years ago, it's, this was subtropical. But this environment was the result of a global warming event very similar to what is happening now. And since this period of time is so well preserved in the fossil record, it seems that we could look into these rocks and get a glimpse of what our planet might look like in the future if temperatures continue to rise. But let's see how all this happened in the first place. Somewhere between 55 and 56 million years ago, there was a period of global warming that was a global warming bump on top of a much larger global warming event that had been occurring through a lot of the Cretaceous. This is called the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. Thermal Maximum also happens to be my favorite Steven Seagal movie. Well, we can call it the PETM to be short. It's a little easier to say. Yeah. The Earth has gone through a number of warming and cooling periods throughout its long history. These climate change events can be ascribed to a number of factors, including fluctuations in solar output, orbital variations, asteroid impacts, and the position of the continents. But what makes the PETM of particular interest to us humans is that it was the result of a massive dump of CO2 into the atmosphere. This resulted in an increase in temperature of anywhere from four to seven degrees across the globe. Of course, this was the result of a natural event. There were no cars or power plants or power gloves emitting greenhouse gases back then. It's thought that a combination of volcanic activity, continental drift, and climatic feedbacks all had something to do with it. But one thing is certain, it had drastic effects on the entire planet. We see um, some mammals uh, shrinking in size, basically. We have really small horses then, where later horses are, are much larger. After the Cretaceous, we see flowering plants diversifying like crazy. Well, you have to admit, a world of miniature horses and flowers doesn't sound that bad but they came at a cost. Excess carbon began leaching into the oceans, acidifying them and bleaching corals all over the planet. Ocean acidification during the PETM should raise some concerns for us now because we can see this happening today. Coral reefs all around the planet are dying off due to bleaching. This should be of particular alarm because coral reefs provide habitat for a quarter of all marine life on the planet. Losing them means we lose a good chunk of the biodiversity in our oceans, and it should come as no surprise that a large portion of the global economy is derived from that biodiversity. Not to mention that we depend on the ocean for food. But that's not even the worst thing that happened. The PETM probably, uh, it's estimated it caused a rise in sea level of approximately 30 feet. And that's just due to thermal expansion of the oceans. You, know, you warm the oceans and the volume increases. But the ice caps are already gone. They had already melted because of this larger uh, global warming phenomenon through the Cretaceous. If we had the same type of thermal maximum, you could add to that melting the ice caps and you could have a rise in sea level of um, to 300 feet. Sea level has not only been rising around the globe today, it has been rising at an increasing rate. In the past century, ocean levels have risen by four to eight inches, and it's predicted that by the end of the 21st century, we could see a rise of somewhere between two and a half and six and a half feet. That would inundate most coastal cities. If, if you were talking about this happening instantly, there goes Florida and a few other places that, that we love dearly, but um, of course these things don't happen instantly. And that's the other factor. 
Um, these things happen over centuries or even millennia. But even the relatively modest sea level rise we've already seen has contributed to stronger storm surges, pushing floodwaters further inland, and causing billions of dollars in damage, not to mention the increased loss of life. And it's only going to get worse. Right now we're pumping CO2 into the atmosphere at 10 times the rate that uh, it was going into the atmosphere uh, during the PETM. Yeah, so it took about 4,000 years for the PETM to cause a six degree rise in temperature. Without a drastic reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, we're gonna do that in a couple centuries. While many species during the PETM were able to adapt to the climate change because of its relatively slow onset, today's ecosystems may not be able to keep up with the blistering rate of change. And that's what really sets today's global warming event apart from the PETM, or almost any climate change event in the history of the Earth, the staggeringly short amount of time within which it is occurring. So we don't know what that means. Um, what we do know is that we may be destabilizing a balance that's taken millions of years to establish itself. And so it's really fear of the the huge unknowns that disturbs uh, science most today. What we do know is that it took about 200,000 years for the Earth to cool down again after the PETM. To put this in perspective, the oldest known remains of anatomically modern humans date back 195,000 years. It could take the entire lifetime of our species to correct what is essentially a couple hundred years worth of activity, the consequences of which we can only guess at. Do you think if um, the climate change that we have now continues in a similar, similar way than as the PETM, do you think that environment would return? That subtropical climate there? And those, those fossils that you're digging up, those types of animals and uh, that ecology would return? Once you're extinct, you're extinct. And there's no way that anything that lived there could return. Now, the environment could uh, become close to what it was at that time, but who knows what would fill it? We don't know. And, you know, nature offers a niche and then the biosystem fills it one way or another. And um, we can look at history and see what happened, but it's very difficult to look at history and project what's going to happen in the future. The worry is when we accelerate these natural changes, um, which are the species that fall out of the new system? You know, it could be humans um, for all mm -hmm. we know. We can look at the geology of Fossil Lake and see what species thrived, what animals died out, and how the ecosystem changed in the past. But we will never know what the future will be like, except to say that it will be as different and as irrevocably unlike as the flora and fauna of Fossil Lake is to the harsh desert of Wyoming today. You know, humans may still be here a thousand years from now if we play our cards right, and um, those people will be living with the results of what we're uh, causing today. Humans have been here for hundreds of thousands of years, so we should probably think about being here for hundreds of thousands more. We're affecting the planet just like the volcanoes and the continental drift that triggered the PETM. So since we are behaving like geological processes, maybe we should start thinking in geological timescales. Wow, that's tough. <laughs> and I, I don't know if it's an issue of getting people to think in terms of geologic timescale as um, seeing how you affect the natural altruism that people have. Most people, again, don't think past the, you know, their, maybe their children and their children's children, but after that, it becomes abstract. Uh, but in fact, the Earth goes on a different time clock rather than ours, and um, if, if you did think about these things in terms of geologic time, we'd be much more concerned about a lot of the things that we're doing today. So, do you think we can start thinking in geological timescales? Should we even care what happens to people a thousand years in the future? Let us know in the comments. Special thanks to our Patreon subscribers for making this episode of The Good Stuff possible. We are completely supported by Patreon, so if you'd like this show to last for thousands of years into the future, go on over to subscribe and support our show. Thank you for watching. <laughs>